That's right. A lot of familiar faces here. So Triku at the time recording is 34th in the world. Louis MT is consistently in the top 50. Nyan Racing Cat tends to appear there as well. And Sassy, of course, no stranger to the channel, uh, top 100 in the world right now in solos. And they're clashing in 2v2s on jousting fields. I had to check in on this. Interesting Civ selection, right? Both sides opt for the roost, but then you get a mixer where Sassy, he represents where he's from. An Otto boy or Turkish boy represent the Ottoman Empire. And then the other uh, mismatch Civ here is going to be the Chinese appearing on the flip side. But roost actually making the appearance on both sides is pretty interesting. Especially if you try to go and be the wood munch. If you try to cut through your tree line quickly, you could play into like feudal French knights even and pressure, uh, double pressure rather, the opponent on the other side. In fact, that looks to be exactly what Tricky is up to. <laughs> we read his mind. So if you guys aren't familiar with Jousting Fields, uh, it's a map created by Bidlin, and you can quite easily, by looking at the mini-map, see what this map is all about. Bidlin loves wood. Long, thick, vibrant wood. In his center of his map. In fact, I probably shouldn't do this. It's kind of a, a Boulder Bay moment. But if you look at the mini map and then look at the little the little semicircles and then look at the center lot, I'm gonna stop and let you guys figure it out. I just realized this map is a lot more phallic than I think Bidlin intended. But with the focus being on wood, who's really that surprised? And it's really tricky, like the way he's chopping through, I'm not even sure if this is optimal to get through quicker. Oh, he's doing the hunting cabin play. But, hmm. Now, that's a bit surprising to me. So tricky, this is uh, an interesting one. Maybe you want to make this type of play. It, high value to go for forestry. It just makes it such a quicker process. What Tricky is doing here is he's chopping into the wood lines and then making space for hunting cabins. This is going to maximize his gold generation. He's probably going to be getting like 67 gold from these hunting cabins. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, Tricky, he's at tier one bounty. Even at tier one bounty, I'd expect around 60 gold, maybe more from this kind of positioning. And then, of course, you can just escalate that with a little bit of a hunting. 76 gold. Yep, that, that's the way to do it. Meanwhile, on the other side, haha, <laughs> noob, why you not do this? I'm sorry, Nyan Racing Cat. He's doing other things. He's going to be a Kremlin Gremlin rushing his way up, but he didn't move out for that woodline at all. He could have even done it with his starting woodline where he just chopped in for the hunt cabin. Admittedly, Tricky gives himself a slower start with what he done here because you know he didn't build the hunter cabin immediately. Uh, he wasn't gathering wood at home immediately, so that could have slowed him down a bit. Oh, so people want to know how, uh, why you're making certain moves as you go on. It's kind of harder to explain team games because there's more of a chaotic element to the strategies. It's interesting when you compare 1v1s to 2v2s because like the build orders are more skewed and, and less um, obvious. But things like this, like tricky moving out and setting up the, these kind of like deep hunting cabins might actually be the future of the roost just because you generate a lot more gold. Like you can see the comparison here. 26 gold for the edge from Yan Racing Cat compared to 76 from embedding the tree line. I, I am still surprised he did not get forestry though. I think if you want to make this play for at least two hunting cabins, then forestry is worth the price of admission. I do love the fact that he's at least playing out to this area fully though, right? This is a big difference we're seeing, is Nyan Racing Cat hasn't actually secured anything with this Kremlin drop, right? He hasn't placed it near enough to the deer that it would cover it. He didn't manage to protect four resources. Like it's just at the back side. So, so far, like looking at the Roost comparative, Tricky got a lot more value out of this. And because he made this his wood line, he is, of course, going to get a huge buff to his gathering in here due to the uh, Wooden Fortress influence. Looks like Tricky might actually be going for a multi TC approach, which I'm a big fan of here, right? So, one downside of making this type of play where your wood line with the superior gathering rate is further away from your base is that you're going to have to walk these new villages a long way. They're going to idle a lot. So what Tricky is doing is by going for a secondary TC, he's going to set it up on the wood line. All of his woodworkers are going to come from that TC. There's no idle time to newly produce workers. And then everyone at home can just dedicate onto gold or more stone if you really want more TCs or food. So pretty cool player there. Let's check in the other players because we've been looking so much at the roosts because we've got that mid comparison. 
We haven't really checked out the other sides. Louis MT is going for the Song Dynasty. He's already hard on Stone, so I'm expecting two, even possibly three TCs here just to be as greedy as possible. Meanwhile, for Sassy, I'm expecting a bit more pedal to the metal, right? Like, I'm expecting him to kind of, like, face this threat head on, right? And try to actually prevent a boom into Castle and Beyond. That's something the Ottomans can definitely do. It can be difficult to map this big, but you can see the intent from Sassy. He goes in for the archer range first. Interesting choice. Most players tend to go stables opening these days for the Ottomans, even more so when you're playing on a 2v2 map because... Uh, Someone cue the Lord of the Rings music. It's a long journey. Let's think now I'm racing cat. He's going to go for a second TC himself. So he's now playing out to that wood line, but oh, yes. on a delay. So, you know, tricky. The argument can, that, that could happen here is now if Nam Racing Cat starts to dig into the tree line, we get a great comparison of what's better, right? Delayed embedments of hunting cabins or immediate? I feel like immediate just because of how great the return rates are. Admittedly, you're adding a big chunk of your eco early on. I think the only issue I take this, and we've said it multiple times, like a broken record, is the lack of forestry to make this happen quicker. But right now, I mean, he's getting a brilliant amount of gold. 150 gold passively per minute. Beautiful. Doesn't ever really need to dream about going on the gold himself, right? That's enough gold. As long as you don't go knights, that's enough gold to get blacksmith upgrades. That's enough to consider a tech up. And people are asking, is this a tournament game? This is not a tournament game. I believe they just queued into each other on the ladder, which is uh, pretty impressive. Because I'm not sure how much of the team games these guys even play. It might have been custom, actually. I can't remember. There's a lot of custom layered in with team ranked and slow ranked. But Louis is going to go for that second TC. Surprised by how condensed he's playing. This is one thing that always perplexes me. Is I think Chinese players, they get it into their head that they are going to be someone else's dog. They're going to be someone else's pet, right? They're not going to get to thrive and do whatever they want. So they essentially just fall for ground. It does kind of make sense when you're up against Militia because you know they're going to arrive like this, but then you realize you're on a 2v2 map, and by the time the Militia are alive, uh, arrive, rather, as you just saw, they are not alive. They die within a few seconds. So I think in this game, uh, Louis could have easily just moved a TC out into the woodline himself. Or even dropped a TC near the deer stack. He didn't need to play this super condensed. Uh, how long ago did they play this? This was, I think it was two to three days ago. It wasn't too long ago. Tricky. Did sell that TC we talked about. Double arch range and the blacksmiths. This is what I love. Like, he's actually going to try and face the threat that's looming from Sassy. And the cool thing is that passive gold trickle is enough to guarantee his upgrades as the minutes go on. But then eventually just naturally allow him to scale it into Castle Age as well. And part of the reason why he needs to posture like this is if you check the amount of sheep he's got, it's decent. You could rush a tech up, but you would be vulnerable after that. It's better that he just kind of parks himself here between the two bases, and then he has access to the berries when the time comes as well. I want to mention the deer, right? Like, it's just you could rush Castle Age, but I think you could lose a lot of eco if you do so. Especially if you consider, if we check his vision, Triku doesn't really know how big the army of Sassies is. We can see it's a non-stop push. So Nyan Racing Cat never bothered to chop in. I mean, I'm surprised, even more so when you realize Nyan Racing Cat also took forestry. Really big missed opportunity here just to maximize your passive gold trickle. I do expect to see this more frequently, by the way. We've already seen people like Faye uh, doing this the other day against the Muslim on the ladders and 1v1s. It's a really cool play. I need to actually monitor it uh, more closely to see what the idle time total is to just get that deep. I imagine you're probably losing about a minute to a minute and a half worth of villager production or gathering, rather, to have them going like that. And then you have to, of course, add in the build time, which is another 40 seconds. So it is a, a lofty sum. But if you consider you're getting 74 gold a minute, and on average, let's say you get 70 gold, right? 60 total bot. On average, one villager will gather 40 resources per minute. So within, f like, you know, within three minutes, four minutes, because so, you've got to put, pay the 100 cabin 100 uh, wood. I think you're kind of okay. You're break even, right? Because if you're spending two minutes total on this, you're missing out on uh, 80 resources. You're spending 100 wood as well. So your break even point is 180. And with this type of gathering, 
or this type of rate on the the hunt cabin, you're gonna pay with that uh, pay that back rather in two and a half minutes. Gold is better than wood, especially when you're the roost. Yeah, it is because like the cool thing with the roost is like, oh man, it's annoying that you're just destroying these trees and then building on them. But, like, yeah, but I get 20% extra, so I don't feel like I'm gonna lose out if I burn a few of these extra trees down, right? It's, it's kind of interesting how Sibs can think differently in that regard. It's Asi going in for the aggro. I, I don't think he has enough troops to do this, though. Oh. Need it, pull the militia. He's going to push back against that. I mean, this, this is a this is going to be a flop of a fight, I think, for Sassy. He's diving the TC. He hasn't really got any netters, any, like, you know, to stay on the front line. to Pai either. He's got nothing. That's just a complete pushback. One night is enough to scare him all the way home. Great patience coming out from Turku. Didn't rush the defense. And this is exactly why we saw him investing in archers, not just remaining complacent. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Louis did, did start to raid in the backside. And that's because Nyam Racing Cat did take up. He's a greedy boy in this game. And it's surprising because, you know, he wasn't really postured to easily defend. And also, because you're up against the Chinese, you're playing this greed game that I don't think you win. Especially if you're not doing the hunting cabin embedding. So Imperial Palace is going to be on the way. Love this choice by Louis. Check the vision. The reason why you, you should really consider Imperial Palace in your games over the clock tower is this. He just got insane vision. It's a 2v2 map, by the way. It's a 2v2 map, and he sees, like, what is this? A sixth for the map? Maybe a seventh? From one building. Makes it very difficult now for Nam Racing Cat to kind of sneak up on him ahead of time and burn these walls instantly. Sassy hasn't been burned out from his plan just yet, but I do feel like, you know, setting himself back the way he did, attempting that assault and then failing the way it did, has ruined his timing. I think Triku should easily be able to defend now. He's even setting up farms behind this. So, condensed eco, protected. Give this two more minutes, and Triku's going to be incredibly, clearly, brutally stronger than, than Sassy. Because Sassy's issue is he can't add in knights. You know, he's now trying to rush Spearman across the field at a slower pace. And you don't really feel great building Spearman into the Roost anyway, because you already know, and you already knew the fact that you were going to be up against mass archers. Is this a pro scouts play? It is. Interesting choice by Nam Racing Car. So this is a big deal, uh, this, this kind of mirrored approach, right? Like being so different between the two. We talked about the embedding coming out from Triku, and this is another interesting detail. Is Nyan Racing Cat is trying to delay that farm transition by going for Pro Scouts. It's a pretty cool play when you consider that there's free deer stacks you can bring home. Especially when you consider that usually farming transitions can kind of kill your game. Now, the Roos are one of the better sieves of doing farming transitions because they get an extra 20% wood. But it's still a stinger along the way. And by the way, Nyam Racing Cat also isn't even getting that extra wood. Check this. This is very surprising. He never dropped a wooden fortress. So no additional wood income around his secondary TC. Meanwhile, in the secondary TC of Triku, Sassy is going to try his luck again. Yeah, this is just not going to work. I, he's actually losing the rams to Archer Fire. Oh, man. I mean, that's just 500 wood gone. Like, bro, I know there's a lot of wood on the map, but you don't gather it that quickly. So asking instead now just going to head up, but this allows Tricky to do the same, and I think Tricky's a lot stronger for it. Farm transition already, I'd say, like, half complete at this stage. An army to now pressure with. Sassy's going to give a lot of map over. Meanwhile, on the other side, Yam Racing Cat is trying to be a, a little bit of a nuisance with these archers. But horse archers aren't going to fare well against the crossbows. Their base damage is just too high. In fact, look at the resource bank. Yam Racing Cat, is he considering being even more greedy? You could not rush if you were out here. You need to post your units. I think he's just saving up for a transition. Kind of trying to get a read for what Louis is doing. This is a great play to make to a certain extent, but you need to not wait too long, right? Yam Racing Cat holding this much resource kind of shows this uncertainty over what unit he needs next, or maybe lacks the production to push those units. But either way, it kind of feels like if you hold this too long, it's just kind of dead weighted. 
And by the time you're ready to make that transition into a counter, your opponent might already have this healthy balance of all unit types. Which I think is what Louis is aiming to move towards, right? You've got crossbows plus the palace guard. I'd expect some siege to follow this up soon. At which stage, I don't really know what immediate transition Yam Racing Cat could make that would break that. You know, someone that is breaking. Is Sassy's control on this left side. Archer's just exchanging out right now. Remember, Sassy, he did tech up, so he's waiting for the upgrades to come through. If Mighty hasn't even queued it, he won't get a chance. So the Vector and Archers are never going to exist. He loses that army. And even though he's pushing men at arms, this doesn't feel like a great play when there's still a few knights around. So you need to snipe those out immediately to feel like you have some semblance of control. Triku is just kind of like feigning this aggression to cover a, a tech up, right? He got his way up into the Abbey of Trinity. He also now has map control to go for the relics. He also did break through the tree line. So at any point, if he feels like Sassy is just kind of stagnating, but is unkillable, you might just see Triku take a bunch of cavalry units through the tree line and try to help out his bro. Bro might need the help soon as well. Yeah, I'm racing cat. Well, I say that, it's actually a change. He just sidesteps the entire army, so Nyan Racing Cat has to run back. This is really problematic for Nyan, by the way. This horse archer play, it's kind of been beaten like a dead horse, right? It, it had its time where it thrived, but I don't think we're there anymore. The problem you have is, like, you know, this unit, it doesn't destroy people the way it once did, right? It's attacks being nerfed, being balanced that way, means that you kind of have to start a step fights. And if your opponent just stands his ground with crossbows, I think he actually beats you in that trade. Of course, you need the same numbers, and right now that is simply not the case, as Louis gets caught off guard a little here. A lot of time being wasted on the Militia and the Scouts. So great micro there from Yam Racing Cat. It really does feel like he's not killing these units quick enough. You can see we've got the double ranged upgrade to minimizing the damage output of Yam Racing Cat wherever he can. And the second wave of crossbows in could easily just obliterate the cavalry. Sassy. Yeah, Sassy's forfeit for map control. Like, if I am tricky right now, I'm going to just hoover up all these relics, right? I'm going to go full Dyson on it, and then I'm just going to push through the tree line. Because I can just overwhelm the other side. At which point, this game is all but just guaranteed. Because the cool follow-up play that happens here, and is part of why Nyam Racing Cat is fighting so fervently, is once you push Nyam Racing Cat back, Louis can pull like 8 to 10 villagers and just rush a keep. And in fact, he's doing that right now on the sacred site. Like, why go into the base when we can just force them to come out? In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Triku is planning the same. In fact, he's gathering stone right now. 453 in the bank. So it should be an option for him in the next probably two minutes. Hope he's going to engage with it. Yeah, it. It has to be the player here. So Palisades first, follow up with keep. He might even consider just going for a few wooden fortresses. Archers. Like, this is the worst feeling. We done it! We beat him! Die, you filthy cows! Yeah, run! Where you go? Oh god, he's got a castle. That's why. Classic Jubated feeling. Oh. He still has the wraparound, but I mean, this is the other reason why horse archers just suck these days. I Ah, look, behold! A massive army of horse archers. We are nigh on unstoppable. Nothing can stop us from ki- Wait, what's this? What, 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 what is this? You can't just build walls like that. <laughs> oh, but we can. Now, who would afford it? Shooting smaller logs of wood at bigger logs of wood is not a very efficient way of destroying logs of wood. You know, walls are going to be intercepted, so it's not a complete cut off. But I mean, Sassy, like, you miss your window, right? Like, the it's crazy to think how different this game could have been for him if he just rushed the castle age. That ram play in the early phase, I mean, I'm just thinking back to like 750 wood. 750 wood. Sorry, let me say it again 750 wood. I just don't know how you can afford that on the map. Okay, admittedly he can afford it on the map, but it was early game eco. He invested a high percentage of his workforce 
into those ramps. So we have to think about it. You know, poor John, Matilda, and Craig. Sweat and toil on the lines. Building, chopping down trees, and for what? Things to be wasted. But now that we are later in the game, when those people uh, are old and frail and we don't care about them as much, Sassy is at least posturing. That's the important detail. The problem I do see is if you know, if Nyan Racing Cat doesn't want to chop for this tree line, I don't know what they do together. And part of the problem is like, I feel like they need to now go as two. But if you do, you need to wall yourself in first. Nyan Racing Cat is the only player Okay, to not like, he's placed a wall, but to place any real walls. He's the only player who's not placed any real walls. Meanwhile, <laughs> Louis don't, don't mind me, lads. Hope you guys like China. Oh, this is infuriating. You know what Louis is just up to. He's going to just cap on resources. He's already up in Imperial Age. He's just going to try to hoard 10k plus. Come out. This is always the frustration when you get into a game like this and you see Chinese on the other side. Like, you feel obligated to go. Because you know the ceiling is so damn high, but it comes so quickly. Right? You can talk about, like, the Roost and the Ottomans and what they can do in late game. But, you know, this is always one of those fastest. It's like when, um... It's like when someone says, oh, this Civ has the best late game. It's like, yeah, but I'm not going to pick. Like, Abbas is actually a great example of this. Abbas have the best late game. Yeah, but, like, how often... like. How do you get there, right? It's been the big issue a lot of players are still trying to solve. And the frustrating thing about the Chinese is like their late game comes so quickly. That's their big advantage. You can argue certain sieves have a high ceiling, right? Like Roost with the buffs around their Streltsy and their Rams. I mean, they got the ability to round those guns down your throat. So let's just pull up that, right? Like I, I've, I've called the Bombards giant sniper rifles. They're 50 cals at this point. But you never see it. Because getting there is so difficult. And even once you get there, like, compare it to the Chinese or compare it to, like, the Ottomans, how do you actually sustain that? It's it's difficult. Because, you know, you, you are on kind of finite resources. An Ottoman player just has passive production forever and ever. A Chinese player has granaries <laughs> and supervision and taxes. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what we're saying here, guys, is don't enslave your people, right? No indentured servitude like serfdom is. Tax them. <laughs> oh god, this is what indentured servitude gets you, actually. No one cares about the serfdom. I... Oh, these folks. You're playing a sieve that gets an extra 20% wood, but you decide that wood is needed elsewhere so you don't build walls to protect your people. Why would you protect your people anyway? The serfs you get raided. Next time you will build walls because despite the fact they're filthy serfs, you still need someone working the fields. And this kind of feels do or die. I mean, this is most of the army, right? For Sassy. Who dive into the eco, but... Uh, kind of feels like you're looking at superfluous damage here. Superfluous, superficial. It, it's not gonna last. Most of it, in fact, gets cleaned up. Maybe Sassy, if he actually pulled the entire army into different directions, this wouldn't have been too bad, but... He just lost the entire army for nothing. Nice up against Streltsy. I think he just felt he was on the clock and he had no way of following up, so... Sassy, raided on the backside. Still not up in Imperial Age. Every other player is. <laughs> and Louis... I think he's trying to send a message now. Get the hell out. My keeps are better. They're faster. I'm Stronka. And Yam yeah, Racing Cap, man, this is what feels so bad being the Roost. Your only real way out is to what? Like, you know, you need to sidestep out of Horse Archers. It's not winning. Streltsy? Not an option. They take too long. This game is done. Chinese. What a fun, elegant Civ smiley face. I did really love Triku's early game, though. Triku. Man, he must have felt so confident when he saw Sassy essentially throwing away his scalability with his early plays. And the cool thing is they never really needed to sync up. They always had the option because they were the ones who bothered to shop through. But at the end of the day, they both understood their game plan. They stuck to their guns and they won their 1v1s.
pull one out for the Northern boys.